Miniature Market has thousands of board games at discounted prices. Click the direct link below to see all of those discounted games. Hello my friends, today we're going back into the ages of the old classic cars. We're going to be building those cars, we're going to be racing those cars and selling them. Today we're taking a look at Craft Wagon Age of Engineering. This is a re-implementation of an older game, Craft Wagon. Uh, so let me show you how it's played and I'll see you on the other side. In Craft Wagon, you're gonna be building, selling, and racing these old-timey cars with different uh, bodies from low all the way to very luxurious. And just to show you that there's multiples of each of these, and they even, every single one of these has a different car in there. Great production. Here's the main board for Craft Wagon set up. Now in the game, you're gonna be playing three rounds, and there's three main ways to get points in the game. One is to be racing around this track, cause whoever's gone the furthest is gonna get seven points, second, fourth, and third place will get two points, and that's gonna reset every round. The whole entire track resets. Uh, you'll also be getting points for how many laps you finished each round as well. So beating others and going far on that track each round will get you some points. You'll be racing for different achievements, like being the first person to race around a lap once or do it twice in a round. So you'll be getting points for all different types of things. And you'll be getting points by selling cars, and we'll talk about how that works. On your turn, you're going to take an action. Whoever's furthest back will take an action. They take any action they want, but the further they go up, the later it's going to be for their turn next time because you'll be able to take this action and then it'll be the player who's in the last. So if you jump way ahead, you'll get an action you really want, but it might take a while for you to get another turn because you won't go again until you're last. These actions do all different things, like if I took this one, I'd create a body. Now over the course of the game, you're going to be developing your body technology and your engine technology. I'm at a level two body, so I can put one here like that, a level two body. If I created an engine right now, I'd only get a level one engine. You could put it in any workshop that's open like this, or you could put it on one you already have a car. And right now I have a car of one engine and two body. At the end of your action, you can decide to put a car up for sale. So if I want to, I could put this car up for sale. And I have to put at least one worker. Uh, this is essentially like a salesman they're going to uh, help sell the car. And so you have to put at least one, but you could put more if you want. We'll talk about that. And when you place a car, you have to set a price. Now these prices are gonna change each round. So we have a whole set of prices here. Second round, they get more expensive. And the third round, they get even more expensive. So based on this, we're like, oh, this car's early in the round. It's probably maybe not gonna do great. I don't know. Maybe we'll price it at five. And this is gonna be important because whenever there's a tie between what buyers wanna buy, it's always price. Whatever's cheapest, they're going to buy. So this, here we have a car that's a body one, engine two, selling for six, and a body two, engine one, selling for five. So who's gonna buy these? Well, one of the actions is to move one of these buyers over to here. Now, the first person to do that per round is actually going to get some points, two, one, one, or one. And what this means is that this person is going to buy at the end of the round. We go top to bottom, and this person is going to buy first. They're going to buy the car that has the best body. Well, right now, if it was ended right now, this car is the best body. It's two versus a one. They would just buy this one, and the player that put, put this out, the purple player, would get five points. But there are different types of buyers. This one wants the best engine. This one wants the cheapest car. But when they buy the cheapest car, they buy it for twice, you get basically get twice as many points. So if this was the cheapest one, if this one was buying right now, it would buy this one because it's five or six, but this player gets 10 points, twice the price. This one is luxury. This one is the one that has the most workers on it. Because as I mentioned, when you build a car, when you build it and put it out there, you can put as many workers as you want. If this player has two, this player has one, this one wants luxury. Of course, in any ties, it always goes to lowest price. So it's very cutthroat because different players are placing out these actions or these attracted buyers, but you're also placing out cars. So you're pretty much creating demand and then trying to fill those demands. But a lot of times you're doing this before this, so it's a little bit of a trick of timing. Sometimes you'll be increasing your technology. So now I could put out a three body, but you can never go bigger than two more on one side. So you have to build somewhat evenly. Sometimes when you're building engines, you're making your race car better. Like right now, when I take a race car action, I'm only going once on the track. But if I have this in here, I'm going to go three times on the track. Also, you're able to uh, augment those by placing workers here. Let's say I have this. Let's say I had another one. I have this. Each of these spots adds another spot. So I have three, four, five. I need three more workers to make this a six. And that's how far you're going on the track. Now the track's pretty straightforward. You go that many uh, places, but you skip over here. So this would be one, two, and you'd keep going for how many spots you go so you can pass people like that. 
Now I've shown you most of the actions, but the one I haven't shown you is recruit. There's three types of tiles. There's some uh, immediate ones here where you take this action, you get three workers immediately. Or here you can go five spaces on the track immediately. These two are sort of some different benefits. Engineers, they give you some ongoing benefits or some one-time benefits. Like this guy, as you have him, instead of getting two times your price for the price buyer, uh, for points, you're gonna get three times. So this one's really good at getting selling cars at the cheapest. This one, you get these tiles, and when you create a car, you can increase the body by one. Uh, sorry, by uh, by one or two. When you get an engineer, you also get one of these tokens. These are cool because when you develop either your engine or your body, you can spend one of those and develop both at the same time for that one turn, moving up your de development a little bit faster. The investors are really interesting because they're going to allow you to, on your turn, when you place out a car, you get to place out one of these production markers onto that car. And this means that this car can get bought more than once. This person wants a car that has gone past one lap that round but again it's more than one car and it always goes to price for the tiebreaker so if you're the only one that's done a lap you could put this guy out you put this on one of your cars and after your car sells because normally when you when you sell cars like let's just say this one sold it would get removed completely all the workers are gone back into the supply all this is gone you get those points and it's gone but if you have this on here once it's sold instead of removing it you just remove this token which means it can get sold again so these investors are great because they can help you sell a car twice in a round, which could be bigger, or sometimes you know, even more. So this one wants the one with the most workers on there. And again, if it's tied, it always goes to price. So the investors help you sell cars more than once, which can be really useful. Now that you know the actions, like this one will actually go up the tracks, the research we talked about, workers, engines, going on the racetrack. This is the one that allows you to get one of, the, one of those workers. And then they start getting better. So now you get a worker and an engine, or a worker and a body, a worker and research, or driving the track and bring a new buyer in. This one is the only tile that has three actions. It's going to the racetrack, researching, and bringing a buyer out. So these are just gonna keep going around and around. Last player goes first. These things, I've already kind of talked about these races. This is being the first to bring like two buyers of the same type out. This is the first one six body, four engine, a seven engine, uh, three engineers, having all your 12 workers out, all different achievements that will get you points that you're racing for as well. Those are all one-time things. Now you keep doing this until either there are six cars out, that ends around, or <clears throat> once all of the buyers are out here, when someone takes a, a, a an action that would normally bring one of these up, this market goes down. And if it ever hits the bottom, that ends the round as well. And then you go through and you sell top to bottom. And then if there were any investors after the, the buyers, they would buy. Anything that didn't sell is gone. You don't get anything for it and it comes off the board, so it's really cutthroat. That's pretty much it. At the end of the second round, you go to these better prices, third round, best prices, and then at the end of the third round, who has the most points is the winner. All right, well, there is Craft Wagon Age of Engineering. What did I like about it? Uh, biases here coming into this is that this was on my top 10 most anticipated games of Essen List because I like the theme. It looked like it had been a popular game and it looked like they possibly made it better. So that's why I was interested in this one. What I like about it. Well, the game looks beautiful. If you look at this and you look at the, some of the pictures of the older game, wow, this thing knocks the other one out of the park for sure. It just the art looks good. The boards look good. Everything just looks awesome. All the different car tiles for the bodies and each of them are individual, they're unique. Really good job. They could have easily have sort of, you know, spent a little less on art and just had one for every body. They really did a good job of making everything look nice here. Uh, the game has quick turns, but lots of depth. I mean, on your train, you might be going, here you go, and I'm gonna research one, next. Okay, well, I'm just going to get an engine. I get three, I'm gonna put it on this car, and next. You know, it's, the, the, game, the, the, the turns are actually pretty quick, given the amount of depth uh, that's in the game. Uh, I like that you're trying to balance your scoring from different areas. You're trying to balance, you know, the racetrack. You're trying to sell the right cars at the right time. And you're trying to race to get some of those achievements. And a lot of times those things are at odds with each other. So you're trying to find the right opportunities and the right times to go down in those different areas. The best part about this game is the timing and the undercutting of competition. Because some of the actions bring the anticipated buyers out. So the action uh, on your turn, you're bringing cars out to sell. And the orders that those things happen and who does what when really matters because it's almost like a game of chicken where you're like, oh, I want to bring this car out. I'm beating everybody in engine right now. I'll bring this guy out, but there's no engine buyer out there. And then the other two players bring out buyers and that's not the engine buyer. Now you're pressed to try to get that engine buyer out there. Or maybe you put an engine buyer out there or, or, or you, you get a car that's a good engine and then you put an engine buyer out there next turn. But then someone else has now worked the rest of the round to try to get a better engine and they get one out towards the end of the round. And so a lot of it is the timing and the undercutting of this. And oh, you know what? We both have four engines. Guess what? The person who placed it second puts uh, you know, a slightly less price on it than yours. So now they're going to undercut you and beat you because they tie in what the buyer wants, but they've got you on price. 
Then you've got the price buyers that are like, you know, they they want the lowest price, but you get twice as many points. It really balances everything out, really makes it so interesting. So definitely the best part of this game is the tenseness, the meanness, the undercutting other players, the trying to, sometimes you're working with players, sometimes you're working against them. It's just, that is by far the best part of this game. Uh, the engineer tiles, they give you some unique abilities that really allow you to power through things. They also have those little light bulb icons that allow you to move up development e evenly, like twice, uh, each one once uh, on a single turn. That's kind of good. The investors, well, they could be really powerful if you get those lined up right and you get to sell your car multiple times, especially in the last round. That could be really useful because you, you can save those investors to, to later rounds if you want to. Uh, overall, I think that the game is really good. It's tight. Uh, it, it, it streamlines, it, it just flows well. And again, the tenseness and the whole timing and jockeying of what's gonna happen, everything is player determined in this game. And it has huge amounts of player interaction. It might be too mean for some. Uh, one of the things I didn't like about the game, well, this game has an action selection that I like in games where, hey, you take an action, if you go, go get an action further up, it's gonna be longer to your turn. Um, that's great and all, but the, the problem with it in this game is is that new players are definitely going to be at a disadvantage in this game just because the other players are going to know which actions are more meaningful at what times in the game. So, you know, it's a little negative there that, that if you're a new player, you're probably going to get squashed by somebody else. But that's okay. Once you learn the game, you get a little better. That action wheel I just talked about, it compounds a pro another problem, which is that in most games that use this mechanism, when you take an action, that action costs a certain amount of time. The better the action or the better the piece you're getting, the further you move. So it's all balanced in that, right? Uh, I could I could barely find another game that uses this type of mechanism, but, but the actions aren't, you know, they all cost the same. Uh, you know, even like Francis Drake is kind of similar where you're running down and you're going as far as you want and you can't go backwards. But even that has some differences where you like, it kind of self balances itself a little bit towards the end is how fast you get to the end and things like that. I can't think of another game that does it this way that uh, Glenn Moore, I think, does. Um, but this compounds a problem in a two-player game. Because in a two-player game, you there are some different rules, and, and those are good and, and such. But I think the one thing they, they didn't look at, which would possibly cause too much intervention and too much you know dummy player-ish. But in a two-player game, if I skip three tiles ahead, that player is getting three or you know free actions. Absolutely, 100%. So you're almost like wanting to just go one tile at a time and then the game kind of plays itself. But then you don't, you want to jump ahead and then they're getting a bunch of free actions and it's like, it doesn't feel as good. In a three player game even, uh, if you move up a few spaces, well, the next player could, could decide to either just move up one or move up two. Either way, the next player's not getting a slew of free actions. They might get one free action, right? And so the two player game did not work well for me. Uh, and plus this is a game of competition and pricing and I didn't enjoy the two-player game. So this is a three or four-player game for me. Um, the rule book, oh gosh, this the rule book had lots of issues. Uh, things were not clear. I, it feels like it was a translation issue. There's no way that they could have passed this game with an English rule book and a box to a blind test group and said, play this and see how you do. And they didn't have any complaints. The rule book is tough. It's not great. Again, I think it has a lot of translation issues. Uh, there's terminology issues or inconsistent where sometimes they call it a production token, sometimes they call it a mass production token. Sometimes that uh, they, they call a, a, you know, sometimes it's called an investment token. That same token is called three different things in three different spots of the rule book makes things kind of confusing. Yeah, even one of the engineered uh, tiles, the achievement tiles. In the rule book, it shows the actual, engine, like the engineered token, that, like the actual tiles. But then on the tile that's actually in the game, it shows the engineering tokens. And it's just a lot of things could have been cleaned up in the rule book. It was not a great rule book. Uh, second one, thing, the last thing is, and all these are sort of minor quibbles, if you will, because the game's excellent. Um, in the original game, there was a little 2x next to the buyer that was a price price buyer. They did not put that, one, that on this one. And even though it's something that should be pretty easily reminded and, and remembered, it's just one of those things like, oh yeah, the price one gets two points. It's, it's a very important rule. It's one that you probably won't forget more than once. But when you're teaching new players, you can tell it to them five times until they're blue in the face and they'll always forget their first game. I don't know why they didn't just put a little 2X next to it just like the other game. I think it was, maybe they just wanted the game to look better, but eh, whatever. They should have put a 2X there. All those negatives to say, the game is fantastic. Uh, if you're looking for sort of a cutthroat, very interactive Euro game that's played in about 75 minutes for three or four players, I'm saying. Uh, it's it's an excellent one. 
This has been the Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships, boys, and helping you find the next one you love. Game Toppers upgrades every game you play, and their Christmas Spectacular Sale is currently running, where you can get 15% off all accessories and premium game mats with storage solutions, $100 off leg kits with a purchase of a Holmes or Watson Game Topper, and $75 off all dining covers. The sale runs through December 22nd at GameToppersLLC.com.